happy Monday. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Hi. Um, I'm here. My name is Ellie. I'm here with Elizabeth Goodspeed. And um, she's going to be doing some really fun graphic design and Photoshop for you today. Um, it's going to be really fun. She was showing me some things earlier, and I'm really excited. So you guys are in for a treat today. Um, say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, looks like, oh, someone from Argentina. Um, hi, Tim. Yes, food, food and, and design. Food and design, the best combo. Two yes. of my favorite things. Food, especially and design all together. It's going to be great. Um, but yeah, say hi. Um, we are in San Francisco, but Elizabeth is here from New York, yep. um, all the way across the country. Um, if anyone else is from New York, say hi. Um, Stone from Iowa. Jesse from work. I was just in <laughs> Amsterdam. I love the Netherlands. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. The Netherlands are beautiful. Um, well, today um, we have a full schedule. We can pull that up and take a look at what else is going on today. Um, earlier, there was the creative challenge with Kathleen. You can rewatch the replay um, of that if you want to see um, what she was working on. So you can submit for later. Um, right now, we're live with Elizabeth. And then after that will be um, the XE Daily Creative Challenge with Peter, and then um, a collaboration with Andrew and Brent. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, and as usual, we're going to have our um, sticker giveaway in a little mm. bit. So in about 30 minutes, you'll have a chance to win some stickers from Sticker Mule. Um, so make sure that you're active in the chat, and you'll have a chance to win 100 free stickers, which is pretty awesome. It's a lot of stickers. A lot of stickers. You can do a lot with 100 stickers. So, oh, we have Olga from Austria. Michelle's making dinner right now, so definitely a different time zone than we're in. We're, it's breakfast time here. Yeah. <laughs> we just I'm had still, our coffee. I'm still on a East Coast time. I'm like, You're like my body lunch. doesn't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Portugal, Austin, Texas. Well, welcome, you guys. It's going to be really fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up Elizabeth's work here so you can see what she does. And do you want to talk a little bit about yourself yeah. and who you are? Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Uh, I'm a graphic designer, as you probably know. Uh, right now, I work at a really fabulous design firm in New York called Row & Co. Um, in the past, I've worked at Pentagram with Emily Oberman and Michael Beirut. Um, I went to RISD for art school, but also studied neuroscience. So sort of have a bit of a meandering path to graphic design. Um, a big part of my practice is I love to use archival imagery. Um, and that sort of plays into what I'm going to be doing today, using a lot of sort of found graphic design, looking at things that aren't necessarily in the contemporary canon um, and trying to sort of bring that to light a bit more. So fun. So some stuff kind of similar to this work that you have. Yeah. So this, this right is here. Um, on screen right now is a publication I worked on at Pentagram with Emily Oberman um, that was for The Wing, which is a women's organization mm -hmm. that used to be just in New York and now is uh, international. They're mm -hmm. opening in London this week. Um, wow. It's really cool. We got to do their uh, publication. Um, and this was just such a fun project, really everything from writing copy to doing illustrations, really sort of the whole um, end to end design. Um, so yeah, this sort of inspired a bit of what I'm going to be doing today in terms of doing sort of a little bit of a zine, a little bit editorial, playing with some photos and illustrations and just bringing it all together. Yes, so fun. You can pull up your archival work. Yeah, this is a bit of a section. Um, I'm very passionate about um, open source imagery. I think there's a big misconception that uh, to be in graphic design, you have to maybe have a lot of money to pay for stock. Mm -hmm. Also, Adobe stock is great. You don't have to pay for that, uh, except for your membership. But um, I think you can find really, really amazing resources um, and also more diverse resources. You know, I love to look at graphic design that's done outside of the United States, that's done, you know, um, older periods of time. I think it's a mm -hmm. really great way to find inspiration and, and sort of break outside of trends and create your own trends. Yeah, that's super fun. Cool. Well, if you want to take a look at more of Elizabeth's work, you can go to elizabethgoodspeed.com. Um, and yeah, she has a lot of awesome work. <laughs> so make sure you go look through all of it. And um, we can go ahead and jump in. You yeah. Ready? I'm ready. Cool. So I decided what I wanted to work on was to make sort of a publication. I thought two days was the perfect amount of time to, you know, try and sort of start to form the edges of what a zine could look like. 
Um, because I love food, uh, I thought that would be a good um, sort of theme. So how I start usually often is I will pull together like just a big folder of um, archival imagery, photos, things that I'm excited about. So this is sort of the folder I pulled together. Um, I can I can walk you through some of it, but you know a lot of it. There's some photos. Um, again, I'm really interested in like 1950s, yes. um, sort of a little bit kitsch <laughs> stuff. So here's some you know fun Jell-O old food. Um, yeah, I actually, as you saw, I I'm love that. A big fan of Jello in particular. Yes. Um, it's so pretty. Yeah, and and I think there was a sort of style to photography mm-hmm. in this era that you don't really see anymore. It's it's like very flat in mm-hmm. an interesting way. Um, also pulled some illustrations that I find really interesting, just sort of stylistically stuff that I think has a lot of potential. So my plan for today is kind of going to take some of the stuff, remix it, do more of like a compositional study than anything else, um, and just play around and, and show you how you can sort of use some of the imagery you find maybe more literally rather than just using it as like inspiration. You can really sort of get into it and really use it as material, which I think is a very fun way to yeah. go. Absolutely. And feel free um, to ask questions in the chat if you have questions for Elizabeth, um, if you have suggestions. Um, Yeah, we would love to hear from you. So I'm gonna start by opening a document. (laughs) First part of anything. I always hate that it automatically shows up in PICAs because I, despite going to art school, I never actually know how much a PICA is. I'm always like, oh yes, uh uh-huh, one PICA. (laughs) So I always switch it to inches. Um, I think I was thinking of doing this maybe as a half letter uh, style, which is you know half folded, folded eight and a half by eleven, which is great because it means you can, um, if you ever want to print it yourself, it's really easy. Mm-hmm. So that's a sort of good size to go for. So that's let's see if I can do math: eight and a half by five and a half. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and I'm going to do the orientation. Um, I guess. Well, I'm doing it as facing pages spreads. So I'm going to do it this way. Um, I usually like to set some pages because it keeps me from being lazy. So let's do 20, because you oh, always remember, ambitious. if you want to have it be um, folded, you want to have be an uh, increment of four, which is something I feel like I always forget yes, when I'm designing. Actually, that's true. Because huh? you have the front and the mm-hmm. back. Um, I think it's it's a good thing to try and remember from the beginning, or else you end up being like, wow, I made this great book, and I can't. <laughs> I need two more pages. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, this is like, you know, when you open a new InDesign document, I think it's like driving a car. Yes. You have to be like, OK. What am I like? What check my mirrors? Like check my <laughs> margins. Um, so let's see. I feel like the default margins are usually a little um, big for me. I like to switch things Make them smaller. Smaller. Um, I shamelessly like never use grids. I just I like to work a little more intuitively, and then yeah. maybe after the fact, sure. um, I'll put in a grid. But I find that a lot of what I'm doing is sort of so f- fluffy yeah. <laughs> that I don't necessarily need a grid. So I would say don't be afraid to. Start without a grid. Um, The one thing I do like to do sometimes as I start to design is I'll almost like retrofit the grid. So if I have like Mm -hmm. a hang line for type, I'll just then establish that across the board. Sure, yeah. Um, So one thing I haven't figured out for this publication yet, which we can sort of table for now, but I haven't come up with a name. So maybe once we start designing, you guys can give some. um, If you guys have suggestions on names. Let us know. Oh yeah, people are um, commenting that I use light mode. Yes. I prefer the light mode. I don't know why. I've I learned on it since like high school. Before yeah. I think dark mode was even an option. Yeah. And I find it fresh and airy. It mm-hmm. is fresh. <laughs> I know. I'm looking at your screen. And I'm like, maybe I should. It, change I, mode. I don't know. I, like I really it. like it, and yeah. I I think it it works for me. And I hate change, so that's yeah. a good reason to do it. There you go. Um, Someone was asking how you don't get hungry all the time when you're working with all these food photos. Fortunately, a lot of this food looks really unappetizing. <laughs> That's true. So that helps. Some of the really um, old food. You don't, want, you don't want this right now? <laughs> Probably not. Um, cool. OK, so one of the ideas I had for how to organize this um, was to sort of do it as if it were like a day of meals, so maybe sort of the beginning um, of it was going to be maybe more breakfast foods, and then the end would be um, more dinner dessert stuff. Um, but I think I'll probably start in the middle. There's one thing I, I haven't obviously planned a ton ahead of time, but one thing I was really excited about was this old illustration, I mean, old photo of um, a Big Mac Canada um, oh, yeah, it is burger. Canada. And I just thought it was such a lovely, like simple image. And I thought it would look really great if it was just huge on the page, like mm-hmm. spread out. So I thought that was maybe something I would start with just to like sort of um, warm up a bit. Yeah. So 
when okay. you're starting on designs like this, do you usually kind of have like one idea and then you just build on it from there? Yeah. Or do you brainstorm before? I do some brainstorming. I did actually have a, um, I have a board I made for everyone. I use Arena for my um, mood boarding. It's a, if you haven't heard of it, it's a really great resource because um, it's all open source um, and it's really just talks. It's it's you rather than liking something, you always have to reshare it. So it really mm. creates like networks of design That's cool. in a yeah. really interesting way. Um, so I do sometimes will create like a board of just some like inspiration that I'm looking at. I don't always know exactly how I'm going to use it, and it might not really be unified. Um, mm. But I, I sometimes will do that. Like for example, um, like I really loved this piece, and it made me think maybe there could be something with cropping that happens in yeah. this. Um, I also loved the way. Where is this? One of these. This is by a really amazing designer named Chloe Sheffy. Lives in New York, um, but she does this magazine for Away, the suitcase brand, and she plays a lot with like shifting the uh, hey. direction. So that was something I also thought could be interesting. Um, so yeah, sometimes I'll look at this kind of stuff to just sort of get the juices flowing. But again, cool. I do I do try to throw in like a lot of archival stuff mm -hmm. as well on top of sort of I, I like to blend my references because I think it's it's um, nice to kind of not limit yourself to, to just the new yeah. editorial. Can you make um, like collections on Arena? So mm -hmm. you could like for this specific project, yes. you could have one and then you could have another. And, and what I love about Arena is you can pin websites, you can pin PDFs, you can pin, mm, that's pin cool. but it doesn't have to just be images. You can also yeah. pin other people's boards within your board. Got it. Because I found that on Pinterest, I would have to like, if I love someone else's thing, yes. I'd have to re-tag all those, whereas yes. here, you can just say, I love this whole art direction board. I'm gonna just like put it in here. Yeah. Um, so cool. yeah, that's fun. It's a great tool. So anyways, here I'm gonna, let's, this is like a classic Photoshop job. Here we go. Like, I'm gonna select this. So I am weird. I know there is the <laughs> magnetic lasso, but I always, pref I sometimes prefer to like rough it out using the, um, the like, whatever you call this one, what do you call this one? The polyag polygonal lasso. Yes. Um, I, I like to sometimes like just sort of roughly like get my shape out just to not like especially this image is more simple but sometimes if it's an image that has like tons of stuff going on I find it can be a little bit like nice to sort of give myself like a space yeah that's um, the thing about having so many different tools is that you can use them case by case yeah. too right like some of them are going to work better with certain images and other images are going to need so we're pretty More lucky detail. on this one. It's like mostly black. I do sometimes yeah. like to just go in and like add in these little spots that aren't um, selected. Like it's, you know. And for example, now that I've selected this whole thing out, I can tell that anything outside of this I don't really need. So it's fine to just like delete it. Um, I also, then I'll sort of invert it. I also really like sometimes to just like contract the um, selection so you don't have to get like that weird fuzzy edge. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll just... Yeah, Tim is saying you could also do select subject and probably on, especially this black background, that could work really well. I have never used select subject. Thank you, yes. Tim. Um, I, I think I definitely, when I first uh, agreed to do this, I was like <laughs> a little nervous that I would be like, seem like I don't know how to use um, any of the tools. <laughs> See, for example, I just selected the wrong half. Um, I always get mixed up with um, when you're doing the layer masks, I forget, is it white or black? Yeah. That is the seeing or yeah. the disappearing. Yeah. And I, I'd say like probably half the time I do that and I like delete the wrong half. Honestly, I think that's so common. Like most people, I feel like nobody knows how to use all the tools perfectly. Yeah. Nobody does it all the same either, you know? And a lot of times you have learned a certain way, so then that's kind of how oh, you yeah. do it. And then it feels weird to do it a different way. So even if a different way is maybe easier, um, I'm not happy with the way that out. the bottom went. So, oh, yeah. I mean, and I actually am a strong believer and sometimes it's like, rather than getting, like, I think the tools are amazing, but sometimes like, if I kind of know what I want it to look like, the natural like hand-drawn version will actually look, the amount of time it's taking me to just draw this myself is honestly like about the same amount of time as trying to meticulously set my settings and will probably look a little more natural. Sure. So I think sometimes people like, even with like cloning, sometimes when yes. I'm cloning stuff, I actually find it's easier like, let's say I'm cloning an ocean, I'll just paste in a new image of an ocean. Sure. Because it's like, looks so much more natural than if I was to try and like, re-clone that same thing over and over again. Uh, Tim has a great tip. It's like light and shadow. So light is white visible. And then, so if it's dark, it's like hidden. Yeah. 
but oh, yeah. that's smart. Very smart. Um, my coworker is on chat, and I'm very happy. That, <laughs> so hi to my office, who maybe is watching this. Yes, hello. Um, cool. So I have my little burger. There Beautiful. it is. Cute little burger. Um, so I'm gonna, in this Adobe Live folder, this is just how I tend to work. I like to keep my original files in case I want mm -hmm. to use them for something later. Very so smart. you should just make a folder in here that's called like edited or something, and then I'll just save it out as a Photoshop file. I just find it's a nice workflow, so mm -hmm. if I need to go back, obviously I try to keep my things as editable as possible, but it's nice to have that sort of flexibility. So if we're doing this by day, time of day, this is probably a dinner food. So maybe we'll go towards like, 16, 17, that's sure. kind yeah. of near the end of the day. Um, so then we go to edited. I love, this is my favorite thing that someone, I like feel like I only learned a year ago that recent places. Yes. That I only really, the nice thing about working in a design studio is you need to do everything very fast. Uh -huh. So it and sort of forces you tips. to like do things very quickly and you find all the ways to do it. Um, and someone else is I know gonna call me out on um, being old school here, but I always work in Essentials Classic. <laughs> and in fact, it's driving me crazy that my top bar is not showing right now, and I don't know where it is. Let's see. You know, the one that has all the yeah. like little funky details? Here, sometimes I just like toggle it to, let's see. Hmm. No, it doesn't want to show? Let's see, workspace. Maybe someone has helpful advice on this. Yeah, I, I always forget how to show the top bar. Yeah. If you have suggestions, <laughs> <laughs> the really basic stuff here. How yes. do I find the top bar? Um, well, because what I like, they have the one in the top bar that is also under Pathfinder, I guess. No, it's not under Pathfinder. It's under a line that like centers it. Uh huh. It centers it in the box. But let's see. This is. I'll have to just like um, do this in a slightly unusual way, or I could just center it myself, which also works. So um, I didn't set a bleed for this. I guess I could do that now if I am feeling really fancy, <laughs> if I do want to print this down the line. Then again, it's um, because I'm doing this as a letter, it would need to be printed on a tabloid size mm -hmm. to be that way. Um, to get a bleed. So I just thought this would look really fun big. Mm, like you just open it and it's yeah, in like your face. Yeah, like just a big burger. That's beautiful. Just a really beautiful burger. Um, and maybe this would be good on a black background. Even mm -hmm. though we just, when we all, you just took it off a black background, so maybe we should try something different. What's McDonald's color? Is it yellow, kind yeah, of? Yeah, Carrie says I can get it back when I toggle the workspace setup. Yeah, okay, yeah. so at least I'm not crazy for thinking that would work. Reset. Um, sometimes <laughs> I'll, I'll like to grab, if Ooh. I'm not sure, from the color itself. Another weird thing is, so when I was at um, art school, I took this amazing color class um, and it was really old school and we had to do um, colors using, we'd have to paint with gouache to match the CMYK colors oh that would be printed wow. out. So That's... as a result, I got like really finicky with good at like putting in numbers for um, CMYK. So often wow. that's actually how I often set my colors for some reason, even though again, it's like very impractical probably. But that's really cool that you can have that eye. Yeah, it can be helpful um, or cumbersome. So, okay, well there's one thing, we'll throw this burger in. I'm just, I think it's like nice to kind of flesh out a few um, pages and mm -hmm. then maybe we can start to like see what this actually is supposed to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, what else do I Yeah, that kind of makes sense working on the publication as a whole yeah. and not like finishing one page entirely and then maybe it doesn't go with anything else that you do. Yeah, like I think something, I, I, I like that this takes up See, I need my top bar though, because where else do I get my typography? I guess I have to open the whole thing. Um, let's see, where is it? Type. I'm did you try to reset the workspace? I did, I did reset the workspace. So yeah. It's okay, this is just, um, you know, everything always goes slightly weird when you need to do it. It knows that you're not. I don't alive. know, anyone Anyone who works in like an office with, you know, like an art director, it's like hovering art director feeling where you're like, you're so good at your job and then all of a sudden someone when walks over around, yeah. and they're over your shoulder and they're like, oh, can you just change that to purple? And you're like, no, apparently I can't. <laughs> I could 10 minutes ago, but not anymore. Um, I like that there's like these exposed corners here. Um, so here, what, what typefaces am I? Ooh. Basis grotesque is always my go-to when I need just like a placeholder. Okay. For whatever reason, I use it for like my, um, so here. 
Let's try something. Do do do. I'm just gonna write beef. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I promise I'm not like as much of a voracious carnivore as this. Across. <laughs> My roommate is a very talented vegan chef. Um, oh. She actually sent me a few recipes to use for this. Um, I'm very I'm very lucky. Yeah. It's really a great situation. It's really wonderful. Um, one tool I think people don't often use, maybe you all here know because you're experts, um, if you do Command B, this text frame option, you can align to the bottom. Oh, that's very Which I handy. find really helpful. And mm -hmm. another thing that actually even more so drives me crazy, you can't tell as much because this is a B, um, but some typefaces, their um, cap height is a little bit um, like it doesn't really align with the text box. You can yeah. change, for example, let's say this is like a lowercase. You can change your baseline um, ascent to hit the X height. So if you want to align it to the top instead mm -hmm. of, it's so, so, so helpful because sometimes like you want to align it to like the big chunk of text and yes. you don't want to align it to just the ascender. Yeah. So I find that super helpful. That's really cool. I also don't know why this happens, but like I always like to just like snake it over to the, you know, even though like technically the typeface ends there because yeah. of the space. It looks nicer to do it this way. Can we make it all perfect? It's, that's the finicky part of graphic design. Yes, those tiny, tiny little details. Does it make more sense to go clockwise or B-E-E-F? Probably. I was kind of thinking the E would be done. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beef. Mm -hmm. And then I might do that Let's in. Let's pretend it's a vegan steak. A white. There you go. Love Beef. it. <laughs> I like the yellow really pops on that red. Yeah, it looks really nice. nice. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay, so there's there's one page. So, as I said, I'm sort of not really exactly like the thing is when we were doing No Man's Land or other publications, you have um, like people are giving you articles, so it's a lot easier to kind of like match your stuff and when you're making something on your own. You're kind of making it up. Yeah. <laughs> so this is bear with me as I figure out. I I swear I've tried doing the drop down workspace. Reset Essentials Classic. <gasps> oh! Uh, Thank you. See, I swear I just did that, but wow. There it is. Oh, my beloved bar. <laughs> I don't know how I do it's stuff back. without this. <laughs> Great. Okay. Another thing I also sometimes do is I hate when it. I like displaying my stuff as um, horizontally because it just fits way more. Which the default is for it to be vertical in mm -hmm. a long line. Which especially when you're doing something that has like, you know, 130 pages and you're like just scrolling down, it's very frustrating. Okay. What's next? There are a few images here that I was excited about. Um, unless you guys have one that you feel like is, Ooh, if, if people want to like. If something is speaking to you. I can scroll a little slower. <laughs> Let's see. I was very into this. Oh. For I Radiant Health, Raisin, Raisin Bread. bread. <laughs> it's from the uh, um, Victorian Railway Railroad Company in Australia. Wow, um, what is in it that makes you so radiant? I don't I would know. Love to know. But uh, shout out to whoever made this in, you know. It's beautiful. 1950. Um, salads. We could do some salads. salads. Let's see. Do I have salad in here? Um, I loved this illustration. That's I don't know beautiful. what to do with it per se, but maybe we can. I have a few different salad illustrations. Maybe okay. we can find a way to combine Play around them. With them. Let's see. Where are my salads? Ooh, a big greasy donut. Yeah, opposite of salad. Um, okay, here's a few salads we can play with. Salads. <laughs> um, oh, fun! I love that lettuce texture. It's good. It's gorgeous. good lettuce texture. Mm -hmm. So maybe so sometimes if I'm not really sure, again, I might go back to my like arena board and say like, what's thing interesting? Like, for example, how about this? Like, I love the idea of like framing. Yes. Framing something. There's also this approach, which is like maybe it's doing some kind of grid. Um, or let's see. Oh, people like the raisin bread. People like the raisin bread? <laughs> yeah. The raisin bread is great. I feel healthier just looking at that bread. Uh, well, I also just, again, <laughs> like not to harp on the point, but that's what I love so much about archival graphic design, that yes. it's like, that thing is so, it's like weirdly contemporary. And it it's, is. And it's funny, like it has yes. a sort of sense of humor about it yeah. that I just think is like not something you would maybe see, or you'd see it in contemporary, but it's, it's almost mm. like the difference between reading a history textbook and like reading a first person diary yeah. from someone, it's like you're able to see the graphic design like at the source as yes. it was originally made. Um, and I just think that's very fun. And it's so impressive to me that people were doing things like that without these programs that oh we my have God, now, it must without be computers. So hard. And right now, I mean, 
you can do so like Photoshop does so much yes, for you. Yes, it's true. And you don't even have to do it. You just tell it what to do, you know, a line or whatever, and it it puts it right in the center. The and program. they were doing that by hand, and that's just so There's impressive. There's this um, illustrator, Russian illustrator couple from the 1910s, um, Rodchenko and Stepanova, who did like such amazing stuff. And I remember I found out at one point that everything they did was um, in lithograph, which means it was done in stone. That's and I was crazy. like, can you imagine making work this good and you made it on a freaking stone? That's crazy. Unbelievable. Um, Raw talent. So see, here you go, my, my little trick again. Not, again, not really much of a trick. Um, <laughs> I also will sometimes... We have three minutes till chat and win. Oh, okay. Just a little reminder for you guys. Is that so. for the stickers? It's for the stickers, yes. So do they get to make their own stickers? Um, Yeah, so with Sticker Mule, you can customize them completely. So whatever they want to put on them, they could put their logo, they could yeah. put cool illustration, anything. Um, maybe we can do some kind of fun, like green eggs and ham style thing. Cute, like yeah. Like what color is salad? What's a gross color for a salad? What's a gross color? Looks kind of like undersea kelp when you do it this way. <laughs> yeah. Made me smile. Oh, made me smile like the bread could solve any problem in life. The raisins add the magic. <laughs> um, I, yes, let us know what color the salad should be. It's real. I kind of like that bright purple color. I love purple. I think purple is underutilized as a color. Yes. Um, okay, here's our salad. Um, and then I, sometimes if I don't want to deal with like isolating it because I'm feeling lazy, I'll just make the background white and then, or like, you know, enough, white enough sure. that it'll like, work and then maybe I'll just like throw it. This part seems to have like a little. Connor says you're so talented. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boyfriend. <laughs> there you go. That's unbiased support. opinion. Un totally unbiased, <laughs> totally unbiased opinion there. Um, another weird thing I like to do sometimes is if I have a whole, again, these are maybe not helpful tips because they're very hacky, but sometimes I'll just put everything in a group and then I'll throw the layer mask on it if I don't want to have to like isolate just that one layer sure. and everything. So, purple salad. Oh, yes. People are down for the purple. Purple. Tim, okay. Jesse, okay. voting for purple. So does salad go before or after the burger in a meal? Is salad, is this like before, a lunch right? salad? Yeah, I think it's like or an appetizer salad? salad. Okay. Yeah, an appetizer makes sense. Oh, I forgot to. I forgot to make this like a logical size. <laughs> oh, I think I'm in, well, I, I'm always torn where I, I like to work in, you wanna work in RGB because it looks better. <laughs> but then oh, the practical you're realities, you're like, oh yeah, purp this purple won't look as good. Right. Um, cute, look at that. Cute little salad. So I thought it might be fun to do, what, what, what were we looking at over here? We had talked about putting it like in a space. Mm -hmm. It could also be something, there's something that feels like this should be with type. I'm not sure Yeah. what type, but maybe there's like something we could do. What kind of writing, maybe we can find a, I, I wanted to incorporate some recipes in here. So okay. maybe we could find a small salad recipe. What's in here? This That's has, like this is a fruit, weird salad. Right? This is a, this looks like it has maybe some strawberries in it. And like pineapple, maybe? Like maybe a like little here, bit of pineapple? <laughs> tropical salad. <gasps> Ew. Oh no, we're getting... Okay, oh. we are going to take a really quick break for um, Chat and Win. So jump in the chat, um, tell us your favorite salad uh, topping or dressing. <laughs> I don't know. Perfect. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. Um, we are waiting to hear who is gonna win our stickers from Sticker Mule. Um, so, and seeing what you guys are saying about salads, croutons, a beef steak on the side, my favorite salad. Steak ingredient. salad is great. Love that. Croutons and ranch, cheese. Cheese is probably my favorite topping. Bacon, ranch and Italian, nuts. Everyone loves croutons and bacon. Shout out to whoever the first person was to put croutons in a salad. They were just yes. like, you know what make the salad better? Bread. Brilliant. <laughs> Lots of bread. Lots Crunchy of bread. bread. Kyle, congratulations, Kyle. You will get a message on Behance about how you can redeem your stickers. 
Um, and then just to remind you guys, um, in a little bit, we are going to be reviewing the daily challenge for today. Um, the challenge is to make a texture brush with Adobe Capture. Um, and then, and, oh here, you can see right here, you can read all about it. Um, this is the chat and then click over here on challenge. Um, and then you're gonna use that brush to hand letter the title of your favorite book. And it's really cool. Kathleen did a really cool um, demo on it earlier. So make sure you watch that replay and submit. And Elizabeth will be um, reviewing those and giving I'm some excited. feedback. It's gonna be fun. Love brushes. So, yes. So make sure you submit. So I just grabbed a random recipe while we were waiting and throw it on the side. I like to sort of use my pasteboard as exactly that and like yep. throw stuff in there when I can. Yeah. Actually, that sounds pretty good. That's it, right? Yeah. Spinach, strawberries, pineapple, avocado, red onion. Maybe we'll just recommend that this is, how about instead of baby spinach, we say purple kale. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> to go with our photo. Um, so maybe it would be fun to do. Croutons make life better. Yeah. It's very true. Um, Something, I, I like the way that these two like forks kind of stick up. Mm -hmm. So it feels like maybe we could do some type that like plays between them or something. Yes, it kind of frame the type with that. Yeah. It could be like a f arc or it could just be like loopy, you know? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna... Loopy could be fun because the type is, I mean the um, lettuce is kind of loopy in there. Yeah. So. Here you go. Kind of go along with that. Oh, um. Carrie's asking, what was the name of the site that you used for mood boarding? It was oh, it's Arena. Arena. It's But it's spelled um, R-A-E dot N-A. Okay. So it's really great. Like everything, you have to like build up a following to like, not your own following, but like yeah. follow enough people that it starts to be right. like Right, the kind of work good, that you want to see. But people post really interesting stuff there. And it's it's partly, um, there's more like graphic designers there than mm. probably on like Pinterest, so you don't have to look at as many um, recipes. Pinterest, you, if you're you kind of weeding through a lot of stuff yeah. to get to what you actually want a lot of times. So my other secret thing, well, so I was, I'll show this to you a little bit more later, but I have, um, like a, a Google Drive that I have that has mm -hmm. like, I, as I find stuff, I save it there. Um, and, and I have a, at the end of this, I'm giving you a little gift, which is um, my like Google Drive spreadsheet that has like 600 it's public amazing. domain resources. So everyone can do this themselves. Yes. I don't want to distract you and show you right now. Okay, so. at the end, you have to watch till the <laughs> end and then you'll get access to that. That's um, awesome. So I'm just running a little, um, because this is a list, I'm just running some like, um, oh no, I've accidentally made the outside of this uh, box <laughs> a text box. So ignore that. <laughs> oh, Nora says you can also create mood boards on Behance now. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't know that. That's really cool. That will be I'll very cool. I'll have to helpful. look into that. Okay. Strawberries. Cool. I, I don't like when recipes do this. Instead of saying strawberries, comma, chopped, why not just say chopped strawberries? Chopped strawberries. Simplify. It's a very. I don't know if anyone here was ever forced to read Strunk and White growing up, which is like a classic grammar handbook. No. Um, but it has all that kind of stuff. It's like a very intense. Um... <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. If you guys have any questions for Elizabeth, feel free to ask them while she's typing away over here. Oh, that's so fun. We lost our, we lost half our recipe. What, what happened? Sometimes, so this is maybe something people here know Sometimes when I do um, type on a path, mm -hmm. it weirdly, you see right here, it like adds a little end point. You know what I'm talking about? I've never seen that. And one it's like, you but I never do. Does that because you did acrylicue? I've never, I've Maybe. only done it where it's like I don't one think so. line. Okay. Um, I'm going to try I wonder again. I if it's when it crosses over that line that it's like, that's the end point. But you've done it before where it's I've keeps done it going. before and it doesn't. It's just when you just. Interesting. So, it's a little, it's like a little heart. Um, yeah, because whenever I've done type on a path, it's like a circle or it's maybe just like a wavy line. I don't think that's it, only because okay. this happens to me in other situations sure. too. So okay. maybe people. Interesting, I've never people seen that. If you guys know type on a path. See, it just like stops at a certain point. Maybe maybe we're not meant to do type on a path here. Maybe Is there we... a setting? Well, and there must be a setting for it somewhere, but that's okay. We're gonna just do something different now. Um, let's see, what fun typeface do you want to use here? I'm do a bit you of just a, hoard typefaces? I'm a bit of a type hoarder. Yes. Um, well, I, I, I did the, um... Oh, Justin says you can move the end point further down. Okay, let's go back, let's try. Okay. 
Can you drag? See, I'm trying to drag it. Justin, tell us how. Uh, you didn't need oh, to. Oh, I moved. I flipped it. it, but. You gotta move the end point. I'm trying, guys. <laughs> All I'm doing is flipping it from one side to the other. <laughs> Maybe we just move the end point. <laughs> How oh, interesting. You know what? This is uh, this is called a. We're gonna find a another way to do this. Yes. In lieu of me figuring it out, <laughs> because Maybe we will figure it out for tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've never seen the endpoint up here. I don't know why, but I, I think I'm usually doing it in Illustrator. I don't know if it's different in Illustrator yeah. than in InDesign. I don't know. I'm gonna try something different. Cute. Um, for what it's worth, I like. I'm constantly changing my mind, so. I wouldn't. Honestly, I feel like that's when the best designs come, right? Is when you like keep playing and playing and then suddenly. One might also argue that the best so. designs don't come when you have an audience of 200. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but you're all very nice for playing with me. Um, yeah, it's funny. It's like it's sometimes okay. you, sometimes you get it right on the first try and sometimes you don't. I'll add a page. So. Oh, Ryan is just joining from Israel. Ah. That is so cool. Um, if you're just joining us, um, I'm here with Elizabeth Goodspeed. Now that we were talking about Godspeed earlier, now every time I say your last name, I'm like afraid it's, I'm gonna say it that way. Everyone gets it wrong. Everybody Goodspeed. gets it wrong. Um, and she is a graphic designer from New York. Um, she's working on a fun little zine, which is a small magazine um, centered around food. So we're doing some Photoshop. Um, and she's an InDesign right now. Um, playing around with this salad. So feel free to ask questions, um, jump in, join us in the chat, and don't forget to submit for the Daily Creative Challenge, which we have about 50 minutes left. Oh wow, that's that's a lot of, not a lot of time to do I a know. whole creative challenge. I know. Um, okay, I wanna, I wanna choose like a, maybe, I'm sort of using the basis somewhere, but maybe okay. something to contrast that. Um, sure. That'd be a little funkier. Um, a typeface I'm constantly trying to use all the time and no one will ever let me use it <laughs> is zipper. <laughs> Actually, it kind of goes with I thought it might go this. with this a little. Don't you think? It's really, it's the best. It feels it's, kind of retro. It's such a good typeface. Yeah. No one will ever let you use it? Why? Well, I feel like I keep trying to use it and clients are like, mm, <laughs> too weird. Or just like, not, like, they like the idea of it, but it's like, never gonna actually, yes. never gonna actually happen. So Ryan's asking if you designed these illustrations. I did not. So these are, um, for anyone who's just joining, I all of these are archival things that I've pulled. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I can't advise on the legality of this, but I try to only use things that are at least 60 years old um, mm -hmm. in the hope that that makes it a little more okay. And also I try to remix them enough that um, it's sort of, hopefully gets pretty detached from its original. Right. Also, this is not for This is a personal use, project. So it doesn't, yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't advise doing this for like, you know, a huge multi-million dollar client. Yes, yes. But for this, I think it is. This is a personal project and. I think it's kosher. Yeah. Um, so I'm running through. Oh, Justin says, I think I found out what happened to your type on a path. Justin, Justin coming through. Justin, tell us. We're in suspense. Um, I love to, I love to do this when you have a text box and you just click, you double click the corner and it like shrinks it. Yes. To fit, very satisfying. Yes. Okay, what else is in here? Michael from Scotland, welcome. I've never been to Scotland, but I hear it is very oh, beautiful there. Amazing. So green compared to California. <laughs> That's funny because New York, New York is much less green than California, so is I can it? only imagine how green Scotland is. <laughs> Okay, Justin says that wasn't an end point, it was a midpoint. But then why couldn't you type past it if it's a midpoint? You know, these are the questions that keep me up at night. <laughs> um, okay, we're seeing one cup pineapple. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it weird that this, should I put pictures of these things there? I think it's kind of like, it's a bit more arty. It's kind of fun. It's not, it doesn't have to be like. It doesn't have to be literal. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, it doesn't have to be literal. It doesn't have to be literal. <laughs> Um, oh, the red box at the end means there's too much text in the box. Yes. But there was enough, like, space. It could have kept going, though. 
overrun tax, which is why you couldn't. No, I, I, underst I understand that it was overrun. What I can never <laughs> figure out is why it puts that overrun point at that spot, rather than like you would think Use it would go the at the end of, of the thing. But yeah. again, this is not, we worked around it. I think. I'm, yes, I think this looks great and we can play around with that another time. Do people prefer typing out or, um, I like I like numerals usually. Mm -hmm. I just think it's fun to be able to. I like seeing how type designers do do numerals, as opposed to writing out like two two red onions. And it's then, because it's Monday. <laughs> it's that's you that is the select, correct answer I think. Select the middle with the arrow and drag it along the line until the end. Okay. So there we go. Beautiful. There's our recipe. Um, this is like a very Dr. Seuss recipe, I think. Oh, Tim says maybe it's because you started a new paragraph after chopped. Did I? Maybe. Oh, actually, that's that right where it, it cut off. <gasps> Tim is always so genius. It's Tim, uh, Tim has a check mark, so I... Yes, Tim knows what he's talking about. So what would go well with this? Maybe we want to pair this with a photo of salad that is also purple. Let's see, do I have any salad in here? You had that one, there was another illustration, but you this want one? like an actual. So another thing, I, a place I find a lot of my references is also on Flickr. So I'm not gonna roll through them now, but if you are doing this yourself too, like Flickr is a great place to find a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah, maybe I'll use that chopped one. We had this guy, right? Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. So I'm gonna take out the type here. I, this is again, everyone's gonna make fun of me for doing this in a really lazy way. I like to just use the same content one until I have like enough gone and then I kind of just like patch it up and it's fine. Um, and I'm gonna desaturate this anyway, so. Tim wants see? to see if, if his thought actually worked. Did you try it? Um, no, here, I'll try it right now. <laughs> You're like in the middle of trying to get this other side. Okay, Tim. <laughs> Told you, genius. Okay. Okay. Now we know you so, can't start. So if you start a, par a new paragraph or like enter, then it's gonna make it weird. I guess that kind of makes sense because it couldn't like do the new paragraph yeah. in that one line. So that makes sense. Makes sense. So even if you did make fun of the way I covered this, it works perfectly. <laughs> um, so I'm just desaturating the parts that are like okay. Because I hate that like yellowy mm -hmm. color. Oh, and I'm using the magic wand. Magic wand and desaturating. Um, cool. Okay. And what purple? Let's find our purple. So there's probably again a smarter way to do this, but it's okay. Um, it's uh, fun to see everyone's different process. So for some reason, when I'm sampling this, it's showing it as um, something I sometimes I find like with photos a, a helpful way to like sample the color. Because I, I want to sample the like CMYK yeah. value. This is again really janky. I'll take, I'll take a picture, a take a screenshot, mm -hmm. and then I'll place that screenshot into my. I've 100% done that. Because it's like all the, easier like, uh, yeah, all to the get time. the exact color. Because mm -hmm. then you're just. I want I want the RGB value of a CMYK color. Yes. So it works fine for me. Yes, I've done that. Um, and then I'm gonna run a solid color over this. And maybe do it as like a hue, or I find that hue is usually more interesting because mm -hmm. it doesn't like wash the whole thing; yeah, it just colors variation. the stuff. So here's our nice green salad. I love that. Look at that. Um, and then we're gonna call this big purple salad. <laughs> it's a Seinfeld joke. Would they say a big bowl with lots of stuff in it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what a salad is. Oh, everyone's commenting on how fast you are. Oh, see? You're super fast. Thank you. <laughs> it's comforting to know that even if you're doing it in like a weird way, I actually feel like it's okay to do it in a weird way sometimes if Absolutely. it works for you. Absolutely. Um, so yes, there it is, magic. So these spreads don't necessarily go together, but I'm okay with that. We'll figure it out. It's we could okay. always we could always make this a red salad if we wanted. Sure. Or we could also, even though we all loved the uh, the red, the red here, this could also become purple, which doesn't look bad to be yeah. honest. Maybe we'll just lean towards the purple. Okay. 
Um, thanks, Tim. Coming through with the <laughs> actual advice so has the best instead advice. of the screenshot <laughs> approach. Um, I've done that too. Though. I I don't know why. I think for me, it's like I did it one time when I was in school, and then it's just how I've always yeah. done it forever. That's the problem. But. That's what happens when I sometimes talk to people who are like I. I feel like in a design studio, what's so lovely is like everybody has different workarounds. Yes. So, like one of my embarrassing secrets is. Um, RISD, the art school I went to, was really amazing, like sort of conceptual, intellectual, but wasn't always, their opinion was like, we shouldn't teach you the programs because the programs might change, which is a really valid approach to teaching. Sure. But occasionally, it meant that I got to my first job and had never heard of paragraph styles. Yeah. <laughs> which is probably more my fault than RISD's, but um, yeah, I definitely feel like I learned a lot from my coworkers over yeah. the years. Yeah. Really, you're gonna learn so much on the job anyway that like, yeah. More, okay. like, school is great, but you learn so much when oh, yeah. you're just like thrown into it. So I want to find a dessert now and play with that a little bit. This one's kind of fun. So I saw this, I saw something on um, here that I thought was really cool. I'm gonna, I don't know who made it, I'm sorry. But I really liked the way that they did this, like the cutout yes. and the cut living in the same that thing. That is very cool. Um, so I definitely, I'm gonna try that. Cool. I, I'm, I'm sort of a, I'm I'm unabashedly a big fan of like direct um, inspiration because I think if you are honest, if I like show everyone what I'm being inspired by and then I go out of my way to try and make it feel different, that's better than if I like pretend I'm not using it and then sure. it ends up looking the same anyways. So I think it's actually sometimes better to be like very upfront with what you're looking at. And in the long run, I think it actually helps you be more aware of how to not look like it at the end. Yeah, well inspiration is different than copying. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. Then again, I did just use an illustration that I took from 1950, so. Sure. Take but that, you get, the greatest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I f if we're doing this thing like with the lemon, what works, what's interesting about this to me is that there isn't a lemon in the original thing. So I'm wondering like, what's a really distinctive dessert shape that would be fun to cut out of like a photo? Or maybe, you know, it'd be more interesting. Maybe it's we cut a dessert shape out of a non-dessert food. Oh, like there's a different kind of food, like a meat. Yeah, like, like it's a like steak or we something. use this, but we isolate a shape that's like like an ice cream cone. Yeah, or a cake ice or cream something. cone feels like pretty. Most people you'd recognize distinctive. An ice cream cone pretty quick. Um, that's fun. I'm sure this is like something that Adobe Stock has, but I'm gonna. I'm, I I do really like the Noun Project. Okay. I don't let's know if see. that's something people are familiar with. Um, the Noun Project is like an icon website, um, and I find it really helpful. Oh, thank you for telling us who the lemon was by. It's really yes. amazing. Thank you, uh, Wang Ji Hong. Um, so it's really helpful for me. I often don't actually pull anything directly from um, the noun project, but it's like, if you have an idea, like what, trying to remind yourself, like what does an ice cream cone actually look like? Yes, then you can. It can be really helpful to see like a hundred different um, Variations. ways of showing uh, ice cream cone, mm -hmm. especially if I'm trying to figure out like, do I want it to be line work? Do I want it to be a solid? Yeah. Is it like a two cone? Yeah. Like to me, this is the most like- Classic ice classic cream. Classic ice cream shape. Mm -hmm. So I will just try and draw a little one of those. Okay. I hate when I have my default set to something weird. The colors? Yeah, yes. you're like, where did this come from? <laughs> what color is this? Okay. So we're doing this Cute. kind of thing. This one's probably a bit further down. Looks like a squid. It kind of does, huh? Okay, and then, oh, I lost my Pathfinder again. Um, I do I do like this tool. I think mine are aligned, but I've always loved this tool. The mm -hmm. one that like, nope, see they weren't aligned at all. There you go. That's why you do these. Align is so helpful. Um, I actually also do, I do a decent amount of type design and I think mm -hmm. Align and Pathfinder, um, I mostly use like other, you know, maybe sometimes use like type design programs. When I'm doing type in any Adobe program, like cutting pieces off of letters and like shoving them on another letter is like best done with the yes. <laughs> Pathfinder tool. Yes. Um, for some reason I like to do my triangles like this instead of using the triangle tool. Okay. It works. And I'm gonna attach it to this guy anyways. Problem is how do I show, if I wanna show this shape, probably should do. Can you do like a little line? Yeah. 
Another thing I feel like is actually maybe work better that I sometimes like is, um, this is a, again, one of those weird workarounds, but I'm gonna try it. If I wanna have, like the way this is, you can see that it's like closer here and here than it is there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so sometimes what I like to do, and I, there might be a way to do this in InDesign, um, and if somebody here knows, that would be great. But um, I will do this weird thing where I'll just like throw a border on it. Okay. It, like expand that, make it a full shape, and then put that back in here. And now it's like exactly a little bit bigger than this guy. And then it's like an even distribution. Yeah. yeah. So and, and yes, you could you could add a white stroke. I'm basically just doing a white stroke. It's just that I want to have this be like one solid shape now sure. that I can move. So it's kind of nice. I also hate when it's diagonal. So sometimes I feel like if you, is this right? Sometimes if you add a shape and then just like. Make it not. <laughs> yeah, can diagonal. you expand strokes in InDesign? I don't, I think you have to do it in Illustrator. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you can expand strokes in InDesign. So here, now's our, here's our little ice cream cone. Um, I have not updated, so I don't, I haven't switched over to the shift debacle, whether okay. or not it's shift. <laughs> the so, shift but debacle. it's my work computer has it still, it has the shift. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna make a little ice cream cone. Yeah. Out of meat. Meat cone. Yum. So the best way I would do this probably is I like to just like select this guy <laughs> and then um, invert that. So now I have one layer is the ice cream cone. There he is. Um, and then I'll do ice cream. And another thing I only I only found out about recently is that you can under the import options you can like turn on and off the layers. Okay. So you could like just post that, and then you can post it again without the and turn on just that one. Yeah. How fun. Which is very helpful. Cute. Because I used to save out like 10 different Photoshop uh -huh, files. Uh -huh. Now you could just save one and then yeah. pull the different layers. There you go. Jesus. What an unsettling flavor, Marissa says. <laughs> <laughs> what is this flavor? Is it just meat? Meat? Meat Steak? ice cream? There are some like very, in New York, there's some very like bougie ice cream places that definitely would sell like meat ice cream. I've had mushroom ice cream. Honestly, I love mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Had mustard. It was not bad. Mustard? I've had mustard. Okay. Okay. I can see it. Um You know what it makes me think of? Because it's like dessert and meat is um the trifle that Rachel makes in Friends. Okay, I've never watched Friends. You've and now never that Friends, Friends is popular again, I feel like I'm like <laughs> I always thought I could get away with not watching Friends because it was like, this is an old show that's out of the zeitgeist, and now everyone's talking about Friends again. I'm like, oh my god, I'm never gonna it's get away with it. Such a good show. I was a Seinfeld family. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was born in, I was born in New York, and it was like I was watching Seinfeld from birth. Sure. Um, so we have sort of a yin yang thing happening here. Cute. I love that. <laughs> doesn't really Amazing. match. Also, it doesn't really match our. Uh, maybe the answer here is that we should should lean into these like oranges and now go get rid of the purple. Okay. This is because now you have keep, reds again. Just keep toggling. That's I think, okay. It can be fluid. It I think have I to think red. Set. I know everybody loved the. Uh, loved our nice. Um, Bacon ice cream. So now I'm gonna go back into this. Okay. <laughs> And we're gonna, another reason why I love to use Hue Saturation layers, we're gonna make this a red salad. Um, I also sometimes like to. Red kind of goes more with the tropical flavors I think so. anyway. A little bit. Um, it's just as deeply terrifying. Um, and then we're also gonna open the purple salad. <laughs> it's like a, a bloody salad now. It is Halloween. It so is Halloween. This is perfect. Okay, let's see. We have about 34 minutes until the um, daily challenge review, so make sure you submit. Um, the challenge for today was to make a texture brush with Adobe Capture um, using like a, your own texture that you make in real life and bringing it in to Photoshop. Um, you'll make a brush with that and then use that brush to illustrate um, the title of your favorite book. So make sure you submit. We want to see your your designs. And if you miss the re the um, the demo, you can watch the replay um, and see all that Kathleen did. It was pretty cool.
we were watching a little bit earlier. Yeah. From the... It looked fun. The from the back, room. the green room. <laughs> Technically, this is the green room because there's a green screen behind us. <laughs> that is true. It is very green. Okay, let's find another photo here. Um, I also want to do some type, some more like type stuff because type okay. is my one true love. Yes, let's do um, it. But I'm not sure what I want to do with it. Um, I, I'm a big fan of like big type. Maybe we can like, now that we have at least like three pages. Okay. So the theme here is definitely like a sort of like 1950s mm -hmm. kind of thing. So maybe it would be good to pick a title. Oh, did anyone have a title suggestion? So you can start Elizabeth working on was asking logo. about that a while ago, but I, I didn't see anyone comment one. So if you have any clever, yeah, clever title suggestions, feel free. I'm really bad naming things and words. Um, I can it do names, but all like of them pressure. are all of them are puns. That's the oh, only kind of name. Wait, I puns do. are great though. This is very cold water. Yeah. It's not good. I, it's really it's hard. Very to weird open. being on screen while I'm opening the <laughs> water bottle. Guess I'm not drinking any water. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Titles. Um, Fine with any title as long as it's not Laura Mipsum. Have anyone here noticed that? Um, Let us eat. Oh, that's a good one. That's cute. There we go. We have a an opener here. Thank you. <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, oh, Justin's asking a title for what? So if you're coming in just now, Elizabeth is working on a zine, which is like a little mini magazine. Oh, I, I kind of like food, except food. I kind of like the idea of doing it like. <laughs> yes. Cute. <laughs> you know. Speechless. Um, would it be wrong to use zipper again here? Because I love zipper. If I, not zipper. There's no rules, right? This is your personal project. It's um, very cute. Or it could be. Nora says eat. Carrie says eat. Let us begin. <laughs> <laughs> I like these um, ones. It's a good one here. I like what I like about the food is it looks kind of like a smiley face. It does, and that's kind of like a mouth that you eat. Kind of cute to me. Cute. Um, but maybe we should find a typeface that has a bit more of like that smiley greet energy. Oh, you guys are really coming through on these puns here. <laughs> Very Western. Yeah, I'm. I'm not Western European, and I <laughs> have never used. What is this one called? This the two dots umlaut? No. Yeah. I'm not sure. Someone here probably knows, and I'm. I'm not an expert. Um, but it's always, I, I think it's very sad that. By Elizabeth Food Speed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's very sad that English doesn't have a lot of um, um, diacritic marks yes. because they're very fun. <laughs> um, Tim says that that's not the same sound. Oh, it doesn't food. sound like food? What would I, what would I do to make it sound like food? Is that going to be like FUD? <laughs> See Germans in there. Oh no. I've disappointed people. <laughs> um, it's okay. Uh, we have some we have so many good names here that I feel I like I know. Okay. Maybe we'll just have to settle for see in English I would read this as FUD. Yeah, FUD. <laughs> what do you what do you put over a U to make it sound like an ooh? I don't know. I, I mean you could do two U's. I could do two U's. Then it would be Right? Or it kind of looks. Um, okay. Do not eat, Marissa says. That's cute. I also like the. I like that too. Great. Eat. Um, Great. Okay. Oh, you're on two star base. Let's see. Other things that I'm trying to think of. I'm a big fan of um, ITC typefaces, which are from the International Type Corporation, which are like good 60s. So they're the ones who did like avant garde. Mm -hmm. um, Bookman Swash, the thing you see on the, um, you know, thank you for shopping here bags. Cute. Sort of like classic, Lou Ballin, another great inspiration. So if I'm not sure, usually I'll sometimes go to them because I know that they'll have some good stuff. I feel like um, Souvenir is very popular right now and definitely has a sort of like... It's cute, I like that. Has a sort of retro vibe that might fit this nicely. Um, is everyone, I feel like you've all had so many good names here they that I'm really feeling did. a little overwhelmed having <laughs> to decide one. 
Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, technically it's spelled like this. Right. But I'm trying to be funny. Brian says food like rude, like F-U-D-E. That's a cute one. So many good options. Well, you know what? I'm gonna just call it this for now because I don't wanna have to think about it. It can always change too, right? That's true. I love a, I love a, like a big type cover. I don't know if people here are familiar with um, Ed Ruscha, who is a, he did these books where the covers like this, they would just go like ch -ch -ch. Just text, so and simple. And I always thought they were so nice. So beautiful. So maybe we'll do a kind of um, Ed Ruscha inspired and make this red. Um, Noelia was asking, how did you fix the kerning? How did I fix the kerning? Oh, I just option, I just shifted it until it felt right. Um, I I try not to worry too much about kerning. I think people can get really caught up in like, mm -hmm. oh here, this is a great example though of that text box thing I was talking about. See how the top of the text box doesn't actually align with, with the, the top, top of the letters? Right. Yeah. So this is where I like doing baseline options, cap height, and then it brings it up to the top. That's a great tip. And also it keeps it, when you like drag it up, it makes the, um, the like overhang go there too, which is really nice. So food, and then I also like to clear up my, I don't like when my swatch palette has a lot of like garbage in it, so I always like delete the unused ones um, and then try to only use, put in the ones that I'm like actually using. So like this red, we're using. I also always like to label my swatches. Just think it's good practice. Yeah. So, and I also especially like to label, if you've ever done like pre-press for, you know, like actually having to send to a printer, I find it really helpful to label it with the name of the thing as well because it's, mm -hmm. otherwise it can sometimes get lost somewhere. And now we have our, our food red. There we go. It's pretty nice. Okay, so let's see. We could do, let's do some breakfast. Um, I sometimes like to just like lock my backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. <laughs> um, we have this weird illustration. Oh no, that says lunch, but that doesn't look like lunch to me. It looks like breakfast. Although it actually, it kind of looks like soup. Portal. Yeah, this girl, I don't know if I want to use her. She looks a little... Uh... The colors <laughs> go well, though. Not particularly appetizing. Um, okay. Can we use that raisin bread for breakfast? Oh yeah, let's do the raisin bread. So the question with the raisin bread is, do we want to try and recreate this, or do we want to just... How, like what, what, or we maybe use something else. I think it's more like, I'm gonna look at this for um, compositional inspiration. Yeah. Like I love the way that they have this circled type, mm -hmm. but maybe instead of raisin bread, what what would you say is best for radiant health? Ooh. <laughs> the best food for radiant health. The best food for radiant health. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's not happy about that soup. <laughs> Honestly, if I were, well, I mean, maybe it looks delicious, more delicious in real life in person, but I don't know how I feel about the way that soup looks. Yeah, not a fan. Okay. So, oh, it's keep, sorry, it's telling me to join the Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's staying. Um, okay, where was that raisin bread? Where did that raisin bread go? So. Oh, hey food, like hey Jude. Hey, hey food. Love it, you guys have great ideas. So titles. how would I probably recreate this? Let me see. Probably want to use Starburst, yeah. like the polygon tool or whatever, and use a little bit of multiplying. Um, so let's see. Oh, I don't want the frame. Avocado toast. It's a good breakfast food. Good breakfast food. Um, every time I do this, I never, like, you know, you can set the numbers. I never know really what it's going to look yeah. like until I do it. I have to just sort of do it and then be like, oh, I guess I want it 40% inset. There you go. Um, and 25 seems actually probably about right for this. So it looks like they have, so we're using our, our food red. And then maybe we'll add a food orange here. Let's see. And probably wanna, oh, another little, I think you are all probably experts here, so I'm telling you things <laughs> maybe you already know. But I love, this is like another tool that I now saves my life, which is this like um, grid tool up here. Mm -hmm. It's like if you wanna scale, it scales it from different spots. So like if you wanna scale it from that corner versus if you wanna scale it from the center. Very, very, very helpful. Super duper helpful. Um, 
And then I'm gonna mess with the multiply. What happens if I shift this? Um, Oh, there you go. That looks sort Oh, of, I love that. That looks like it's getting to be kind of what we were trying to do here. Except maybe this is going to be like a white now. It looks like they almost have like three layers of this. Um, Again, doing this all without a computer probably. Well, maybe. Oh, yeah, definitely. Whenever that was made. I believe this has this one has to be pretty old. Um, and then they, I'd say this looks like it's gone down a little bit. Oh, you could put eggs in the middle. Oh yeah, love an egg. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Tint. So I know this is kind of, it's supposed to be like part in design, part Photoshop. It's sort of a little bit of both. <laughs> I think, I mean, you kind of have to use everything. When sure. You do this kind of stuff. Yeah, you jumped in Illustrator for a second. It's a very like seamless process. Okay, so that's not quite the same at all. One might say it's nothing like the original. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing with inspiration, right? Like you yeah. saw something and then it inspired you, but it's almost better that it's not exactly the yes, same because exactly. now it's your own take on it. Um, but I think I want to make the center one a little less pointy. That's the technical term. Yes, of course. <laughs> 20, let's do, no, 20 is too much. 25. Okay. Right. About 20 more minutes to submit your designs for the Daily Creative Challenge. Mm. So make sure you get them in there. Um, so I wonder if it would be nice to do, have this like go on the whole page. Wow, this is looking pretty. This looks like a. This, it looks like a sun. I was which gonna say is this great is great because it's breakfast. This is our breakfast. It's like good morning, rise and shine. Here's your sunshine. It's quite trippy. Um. <laughs> Hashtag good stream. <laughs> Playing with your last name all over. I love it. Um, I have. I feel like my life has been. It's really, really sad that I'm not an athlete because. <sighs> Good speed. I have nothing. Like I guess I'm speedy at Photoshop, you which are. is great. You are. You're speedy at design. But um, it's something that I feel like my whole life I was like really not fast enough to be qualified to have this name. Yeah. Um, okay. So what are we gonna pull from here? We have some waffles. Oh. We have. Love that. What other breakfast foods do we have in here? Cream does it. Is that coffee? This is dry milk bread. Oh, that's oh <laughs> yum. <laughs> Totally different thing. Dry milk makes better bread. Um, let's see. I, I I don't know where these came from, but I really like Cute. them. I'm just gonna move this down here. Um, this is an egg. Eggs I have known. Oh my gosh, is that a book? It's a book how cover. How cute. Um, how do I just tell this to stop popping up? Uh, maybe just turn off your, do you need your Wi-Fi on No, right do now? I need it to if, be on this? No. I'll turn it off for now. Yeah, Okay. there you go. Let's see. People said eggs, but I don't think I have any eggs in here. I have donuts. Oh, I vote for the donuts. <laughs> I love the donuts. I think it's perfect. Um, gotta play Glorious the icing glaze. Uh, okay. Again, not scientific, but sometimes I just feel like it's easier to just like do that and just click around a bunch. Sure. Um, expand a little so you can put too much. So then I'll, and then just do that. There, there you, go. you go. There's some donuts. Nice and easy. Oh, those are nice. They match the color actually quite well. It's actually perfect. Wow. Beautiful donuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like this wants to be a face. Now, yes, I was just about to say that it looks like eyes now. <laughs> How cute, look at that. Um, I think maybe rounded edges here. Yeah. What a happy little guy. 
Hi, Diego. If you are just joining us, um, I'm here with Elizabeth Goodspeed. That's me. Also, yes, some, whoever pointed out that um, The Rock is the Rock is the one movie that has a good speed in it. Also, <laughs> if anyone watched Lost, there's a character with um, there you go. good speed. It's my one pop culture. My one. We're working on a food zine, a little mini magazine. Um, I like using these too. They're like, you know, you can like edit the size. Mm -hmm. So I find that when you do this, you have to make it like just, you kind of get a little bit of that like bump here. So it sometimes ends up being easier to just do it at 100%. But I think this should be Krispy Kreme's new mascot. I think you should pitch this to them. <laughs> I think it's quite adorable. A little donut sunshine face. Yeah. OK, so what do you have after donuts? Probably need to find some coffee. Do I have any coffee in here? Coffee for sure. I thought there was one. Go up a little bit. Is that cream? This one? Is that less coffee? Oh, yeah. That looks like coffee. Yeah. Cream does it. Cream does it. So maybe. Cute. I have an idea. I think it's nice. So here's a here's a, another little weird trick that I sometimes do. This is like a pretty low resolution image. So sometimes when I want something to be bigger, I'll just sort of like force it bigger, and you get kind of blurry. And I like to add. So you can add noise here, but I think it's much more effective to add grain using the camera raw filter. Um, you can. Add, you know, like various amounts of grain, and I'll add different amounts for each layer, and then I'll like put them on top of each other, um, and it gives it a kind of like, it looks like intentionally rough. Sure. Yeah. Rather than instead of just a blurry image. Yeah. And especially if you use like one that's a bit rougher. Sure. It kind of gives it a tone, and then even if I was like wanted to really like boost that additionally. And sometimes the easiest way to do this is actually also to make it just a smart object. Um, but then I'll occasionally also add um, like a color halftone on top of all of that. Basically, like, because I'm working with material that feels very like retro to begin yeah. with, I find that I can sort of force images. Like while this image was really low resolution, it it's can okay kind of look. It's an old image. Yeah. yeah. Especially if the halftone is just like slight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it ends up being a bit easier. So yeah, I think that Beautiful. looks better than it did at the beginning. Um, so again, what I then tend to do is I'll make this, now that I want to start like selecting it, I'll either make it into a group or put it into a smart object okay. so I can not have to mess with it. Yes. So Double now, um, oh, the only thing I hate about halftone is when you make it halftone, um, it's like really hard to select a section. I thought it'd be kind of fun if maybe we had this like pouring onto the page, but something else, the, the, Maybe the yeah. cream turns into something else. Oh, I like that. So this is one where I'm going to just do the, it just seems. Just draw. I know that I could do select subject, but it's so much, there's so much going on that it doesn't take me that much time. Yes. I find it easier, especially if I want to keep this border in, to just like go around. But you all have to watch me do it, so. <laughs> Someone asked what version of InDesign this is. Um, I think it's the most updated version. I just keep it in white. <laughs> <laughs> I've already been mocked for this. Please carry on. Please carry on. <laughs> Um, Everyone has their own preferences. Yes. Um, while I'm doing this, I don't know if anyone has any other yes, miscellaneous have, questions yes, for me. Yes, questions for Elizabeth. Um, if you missed the intro earlier, Elizabeth is working as a graphic designer in New York um, for Row Co. Co. Really amazing. You should check out their work. Yes, check out their work. You should check out Elizabeth's work too. Um, her link to her website is just her name, elizabethgoodspeed.com. Nice and easy. Yes. And Instagram as well, Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth underscore. Elizabeth underscore, yeah. Goodspeed. Um, and I do actually, if you go on my Instagram, I post a lot of my archival finds under a hashtag that's um, casual archivist, which is sort of the name I've given myself as a non official archivist, but an mm -hmm. archive enthusiast. Because um, I really like to share stuff, and, and what's great is sometimes I'll post something that I found that people really mm -hmm. enjoy, um, and then they'll make something out of it and send it to me, and it's really fun to sort of get to create that loop, um, yeah, and, and sort of have that design community get to appreciate the resources that I'm pulling as well. That's very fun. Look, I'm almost done. There you go. <laughs> so quick. Oh, you might be able to update your InDesign, because um, or your Photoshop, because. Oh, because of the shift thing? It's 2018, the version that you're using. Really? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Sorry, I'm That's okay. not a good role model. That's okay. Um, Nora's asking, are you using a mouse or are you on the trackpad? I'm using team? a trackpad. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. So feel free to mock me for that too. Um, sometimes when I use this lasso, I do find that it you know, has like slightly rough edges. So I'll just go like modify. And in this case, I'm on the outside, so I'll expand it. Um, and then I'll just use the smooth feature. Mm -hmm. Dave is asking, what are your favorite InDesign tools? My favorite InDesign tools? Um, I don't know. I just, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, yeah. I, I think InDesign is like number one for type. That's mostly what I end up really liking it for. I can't find like many other programs that I think do as good of a job. Um, oh, I spelled pouring wrong. That, that, that have so much functionality with type. I find that I'm always discovering more ways to um, like, play with the baselines, really like um, just mess with things and, and have it be really precise, which is yeah. great. Big fan. I probably use InDesign more than anything else, but um, Illustrator and Photoshop are close seconds for sure. Ooh, what's your favorite hot hot drink to your coffee? What's your favorite hot drink? Um, I like tea. I also like matcha. Mm -hmm. um, I'll really drink anything. <laughs> I'm a very non-picky eater, which is uh, I think rare. Yeah. I think there's almost not, I'm like a, I'll eat meat, I eat vegetables, I sometimes eat vegan, I sometimes eat carnivoric. <laughs> um, so it sort of just depends. So what should this turn into? Ooh, hot chocolate with marshmallows. Ooh, that does sound good. Mm -hmm. I love a chai also, really. Oh, a good chai. And I also recently learned I'm not supposed to say chai tea because that's like saying ATM machine. Oh, because chai is tea. Chai means tea. Got it. So. Interesting. <laughs> that's my thing. Which, okay, I want to have this um, liquid turn into something funny, so I do actually have to turn my Wi-Fi on. Okay. I think it would be really funny, like, do you know um, butter sculptures? Here, you can sign in too. Okay. You can sign in One moment, one. signing in on the back. Yeah, try that one. And it was kicking us off the Wi-Fi earlier, so. The practical realities of life. You know, just how it is. Um... Oh, coffee and cognac. It's a bit early. <laughs> I do love a um, white Russian. Oh, a white Russian. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anyone here is familiar with butter sculptures. It's a very weird American thing. Wonderful. They have these contests to make sculptures out of butter. And I just feel like somehow the texture of this guy like reminded it me looks of like, like the color. Ooh, pouring into a, a Pour, butter Like sculpture. as if someone is like pouring a butter yes. sculpture. Amazing. Um, but I don't know which butter sculpture we should use. Let's see. Here's an astronaut. An astronaut. Someone here said they were from Iowa. This is all the Iowa State Fair. Wait, really? Yeah. How it's a, crazy. A very, um, I think it's a very like Midwestern thing. My mom is from Ohio, so I, okay. that's sort of where I got my knowledge <laughs> of butter sculptures. Um, yeah, maybe we'll go with that one. I also do like using these. These like tools. So do they, just, they have to keep it very cold, huh? Yeah, they're in these like cold chambers. Wow, that is impressive. America is America. weird. There's actually a movie, I think. Sounds healthy, says I Tim. think here's a butter sculpture of Justin Trudeau, which feels like a really weird mashup of North American culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it celebrates the dairy farmers. Hey, that's great. <laughs> um, okay, what should we choose here? Well, let's see if, I want to just choose one that's big enough that we can actually Photoshop it, you know. Oh, Kent is asking, have you had a chance to check out the Design Archive Library at the Cooper Hewitt Museum? I have. I have a whole lot of IRL and digital archives I would super suggest. The Cooper Hewitt one is amazing. Cooper Union also has a place called the Lubalin Center, which is their archive um, that, that focuses on um, specifically the work of Lubalin and other people of that era. So like Fact Magazine, um, Eros, all that stuff. Um, there's another great here in San Francisco where I am live streaming from, there's a place called the Prelinger Library that's also um, Americana that's really fantastic. And there's also the Letterform Archive. So uh -huh. pretty much any city, oh here, I think this is the one we have to do. Um, <laughs> pretty much any city you live in, I, you can find, um, that is amazing. I think a great, a great archive, big fan. Um, but yes, that's a good one. Cooper Hewitt is just great generally. So this is gonna be probably annoyingly tedious to Photoshop. So maybe this is a situation where we wanna do something smart rather than selecting it by hand. Yes. Um, I am gonna also fill in the bottom of this um, just by cloning it in a sort of lazy way. Okay. 
eight minutes left to submit for the Daily Creative Challenge. Make sure that you um, submit. Show us how you made your own brush. Um, and I want to see your favorite book titles. Yeah. So fun. Um, David was asking if you have any advice for new graphic designers. I do, always. Well, so my sort of background that I don't think I mentioned is I actually, I always thought I was going to be a, um, a doctor. I went to school for neuroscience. Um, so <laughs> very impressive. Uh, which is not what I'm doing right now. <laughs> um, and so I always felt like a bit of a, I wouldn't say quite imposter syndrome, but just sort of um, like I was sort of joined late when I, when I got into design. Um, and like everyone already knew more than me and all that kind of stuff. And, and I think one of the reasons I fell into archiving was that it felt like a way to say, if this has worked, this is like proven to have worked for somebody mm -hmm. in history, it'll probably work for me too. Yeah. So it was a great way to kind of like almost check, I'm gonna try the magnetic lasso here, which is not gonna work because it's too light. Mm, maybe it's okay for a rough shape. Um, so I would say, first of all, like really make stuff that you're excited about. Like people mm -hmm. will see right through you and not in a negative way, but like there's so many people trying to be graphic designers that if you yeah. aren't making something you're passionate about, people will be able to tell. And here I am making a zine that has a butter sculpture, like, and someone has allowed me to live stream it to all of you. <laughs> so I'd say just be confident that if you're, yes. that's the best way to get started to like mm -hmm. blend the stuff you know into the stuff you're trying to learn because then you'll have a passion for it. I'd also say I, pretty much all the jobs I've ever gotten were because I just like cold emailed people. Like I just sort of wrote people and, and tried to, and I, I'm lucky to live in a major city, of course, but um, you know, I would, I will meet anybody for coffee. I will talk to anybody uh, below or above me in terms of expertise. I think it's just really, it really is a community and being a kind person um, mm -hmm. is, is a lot of the work too. So I think there's a lot of temptation to be kind of cutthroat when you're starting and try yeah. and like beat other people. But in reality, those people are gonna be the people who help you get jobs and teach you stuff. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think being communal Absolutely. and nice. Be nice. Yeah, I love that advice of like making work that you're passionate about and like the kind of work that you want to be doing and showing that you can do that and then people are going to see your portfolio, they're yeah. going to see your work and they're going to want to hire you for that work that you love doing. I also think being honest, like I went into interviews and was like, hey, I studied neuroscience, like I, you know, wasn't, yeah. you know, I don't, I maybe didn't have as much time as, I, I also like concurrently um, went to art school, but I did feel like I was sort of always split between like studying for one thing, studying for the other mm -hmm. thing. But I tried to be really honest with people about where I wasn't, um, where I didn't have the skills. And sure. I think people really appreciated that I'd say, hey, I think I'm really good at X and not as good at Y, but like, I think I could be good at Y if I had the time and I mm -hmm. will work hard. I'm willing to learn. Yeah. Yeah. No ego is always the best. Yes, absolutely. Um, Nobody likes. I will say, and, and I always, I use this as an example because I think everyone knows him and he's a bit of a design celebrity, but when I work for Michael Beirut, he, such a nice guy, and part of it is he answers every email he gets still. Wow. You know, and it's like, he doesn't have to, but he's so, he's so open with his time mm -hmm. um, and open with his experience and knowledge and just a really warm person, and I think that plays a big part in how he ended up being so successful. Yeah, absolutely. Don't be bitter, be butter. <laughs> <laughs> the name of this page. We're almost done selecting this uh, cow on a motorcycle. Made of butter. I mean, I just want to know the thought process in the person who made this. Like, how did they Yeah, think, you should like, bring them in for an Adobe Live, yeah. but the Adobe product they we use We do a live butter sculpture. Oh my god, please. <laughs> okay, here we go. Almost there. Um, why are you not using the pen tool? Nasha is asking for this. Um, I guess you can do the pen tool and then make a path. But wouldn't, if the pen tool, I don't want, I'm too lazy to have to draw on the yeah. edges of this. I'm just not really feeling up for it. So <laughs> it seems a little easier. And then I'll just go in with the polygonal lasso and like get this inside part kind of. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really try to do things in the quickest way possible. Um, and I find that like I can work on the precision later as needed um, sure. and, and sort of like, mess with the tools as I need them, but this is sort of for a fun zany thing, you know, so it doesn't really matter to me if it's like... It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Yeah. I'm trying to show you people that... Oh, and Tim says, I feel like the magnetic lasso tool doesn't get enough love. So I'm, here you are. I'm so happy to give it love. Giving it love. Also, I think it's... Hey, it selected this whole uh, 
Yeah, look at that. Pretty impressive. So now that I've selected most of it, I actually feel like I can probably select just the butter. Most, mm, maybe not. I thought maybe I could. Mm, just like the background eraser tool or the magic eraser. Yeah. yeah. Again, this is all pretty like workaround ways of doing this because I'm feeling a little lazy. Also, I think you guys probably don't want to like watch <laughs> me. A super, super detailed. Actually, and see now I just did this and I realized there's probably a smarter way to do it, which is I want to do this as a layer mask because then I can just re-delete the parts that I don't want to show. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Um, super selection technique. Thank you, <laughs> I'm trying. Um, I, if someone had told me in art school how much of my job would be selecting things in yes. Photoshop, I would have been probably less inclined to go into graphic design. <laughs> It's a lot of selecting. Um, Ooh, Tim says you could also try out select and then color range tool. Oh, I've heard of that one. Yeah. Oh, no, I do know that one. I do know that one, yes. I, I not just have heard of that, I have used that. <laughs> um, I used to really scoff at layer masks because I thought they were like adding unnecessary steps, kind of. Mm -hmm. But now I realize how nice it is to be able to like undelete the stuff that you just deleted yes. if you like overshoot it. Yes. Um, God, this cow has so many details. Why did I pick this cow? <laughs> <laughs> because it's when it's done, it's going to be worth it's the true. effort. It's but a also, cow on a I would also say sometimes you spend a lot of time doing something and then you realize it doesn't work, <laughs> and that's also okay. Yes, that is true. Um, okay, here I go. So close. So many spokes. Um, I've never been near a cow in real life because really? I'm from New York, um, but I see them on the side of the road sometimes and I've always wanted to, I've heard they're much bigger than you think. They are. They're very big. Did you grow up near cows? I didn't really grow up near cows, but I did milk a cow one day. You milked a cow. That's, I did. Yeah. That's enough to definitely it was, qualify. It's more difficult, at least for me, it was more difficult than I expected it to be. I guess that... I don't know how difficult I thought it would be. Like it's, like I kind of thought it just like, you know, just be kinda, really easy, but. Just kind of squeeze a little? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Here we go. We have a cow now. There we go. i just do a tiny it's bit beautiful. of. Beautiful. To get rid of this glare. In a few spots. Oh yeah, I must have been behind a window, huh? Yeah, <laughs> in the freezer. <laughs> um, oh, Dave is asking, what kind of music do you listen to while designing? Do you listen to anything in particular? I'm not a psychopath. Yes, I listen to music. I'm not a You're not just working people, in silence Sometimes people by yourself, who like, like work <laughs> silently, I'm like, how do you do it? I need to be very distracted at all times. In fact, I, I even like watch a lot of TV yes. while I design, but it has to be shows that I don't care that much about. You've already seen. Yeah, or, or like repeats. Um, well, you should watch Friends now. I don't think I want to be a Friends person. I'm sorry. Oh. This is my, this is my like, this is my cross to bear. Okay. Um, I, okay, I'm just gonna give up on that spot. What music to listen to? Um, believe it or not, I also really like retro music. Um, <laughs> that makes sense. I'm not love some Love some Fleetwood Mac. Yes, oh, Fleetwood um, Mac. Shaggy Otis. Uh, yeah. Just, I mean, it, some indie stuff too. Um, I've been really liking Still Woozy recently. Okay. If anyone's heard of him. Um, my twin brother also just... Um, his band has recently started performing, and they're called Mr. Eyeballs. Oh. And I'm a big fan of their music also. Okay. Um, love some eyeballs. Okay. Love it. Okay, we're gonna hop over and do- Just when the, I finish the butter. Just when you finish the butter, but if we have time at the end, we'll come back. Okay. If not, we can see it tomorrow. Great. Okay. Um, so our challenge for today was to use Adobe Capture to create your own um, brush and then illustrate the cover of your favorite book. Great book. So here's one. So wow. do they create the whole composition in addition to the lettering or mostly the lettering? Um, this challenge is focused on the lettering. Okay, but awesome. Yeah. Cool. I was gonna say it matches, I really like how centered the whole composition mm -hmm. is, like to center the type over yes. that. And some people may do the whole composition, yeah. so yes. It creates a nice sort of like roll down from the top. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful. I like I like your approach to the, to the T. It's kind of a little bit um, British. <laughs> My, my only recommendation might be that the O looks a little um, like different in style because you can sort of see where the end of it starts. Mm. It might be nice to think about how that could sort of match the streamlined quality of the other letters that are happening. 
Love it. But the white pops really well. Yeah, the white is beautiful. I love that just like red, I don't know if you did that red circle. But yes, I love that red it circle. It looks very good if that is the case. Thanks, Mari. The tortoise on the move. I have never heard of this, but I'm all about it. This feels very like classic B horror movie. Yes. Um, I really like how you have some of the, like this image on the bottom is kind of going up at an angle, I guess this way, if you match yeah. me. Yeah. Um, it might be, and I love how you're doing that with the and T-O. I think it would be fun to do that with move, like maybe really make the whole thing on Just an like italic. Move up I think it could really way. like, especially when you think about it compositionally, it can kind of like bring your eye across the page a bit, which is usually nice. Yeah. That's cool. And the red, of course, just, you gotta do that in red. Yes, um, great job. Nice. You guys are doing good stuff. That big type like you are talking yes, about Yes, I love big type. Anytime <laughs> you can do, the bigger the better. Let's see. Oh, it looks like this was maybe the original. Ah, okay. And then, or. That's just it mocked up. I think, I think so. That's nice. Or I've, maybe this is them just putting it on a book. I'm oh, not okay. sure. Um, it's, I feel like I haven't heard of some of these books. I know, I gotta read more. I'm very curious. Um, I love this, I love the texture in the background. It feels very like reptilian almost. Mm -hmm. um, or like I, leaves, like jungle. Yeah, and I, oh I guess so, yes, because there are these sort of like red flowers in here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm looking like at a very far away no, screen. No, but I think, it, I think it could be either and I think it's kind of obscure. Yeah. Um, I love the way you've mirrored the R and the S um, it's a really strong shape. I might, and I, oh, the I dot being the. Yes, right here. That's very fun. It might be fun to, if you bring that whole thing up to the top, you have all this space in between the R and the S. Maybe you could put the sort of like in that little like area in between, you know, so it almost kind of like locked up into one big shape. Cause that could look really nice near the top. And then you'd have like all this beautiful space where you can see um, yes. the, the green sort of popping out. Yeah, great tip. It's like rapid fire could <laughs> Let's see. How oh, fun. So it's beautiful. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if this is done with a brush, but that's done with a brush, but beautiful. very lovely lettering. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, this one I have heard of. Also very good for a spooky Halloween moment. Yeah. Good good like Perfect lock. I like the I love when people do that with type where you like lock some of it down to the baseline and some of it to the top. So you have this kind of like varied approach. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Try it with a brush next time. Yes. Let's see. Okay. Also not with a brush. But not with a brush, but but nice. And this is probably, I assume, some a Photoshop collage. Yeah, made it looks by, like it. This reminds me of, I don't know if anyone here ever watched or read Great Gatsby, how there's mm -hmm. like the famous like t eyes, the eyes of the doctor. I don't remember the name of the doctor, but in the yeah. background, this has that kind of approach, which is obviously if it worked for F. Scott Fitzgerald, It'll work for you. <laughs> Famous line. Um, good dark colors. Carrie, cool. another great one. I'm trying to see if we're... Maybe we didn't, maybe people... Maybe that's all with the maybe brush. Maybe that's all we have with the brush. Well, let's just scroll down and see. Well, great, good job, guys. Yeah, I think those are all the ones with the brush. Um, so if you wanna see um, the replay of that, you can go watch Kathleen um, show you how to create your own brush using Adobe Capture. Yeah, I had never heard of Adobe Capture and now I wanna go make brushes yes, all the time. Yes, you guys should definitely check it out and um, and see what you can create. But thank you for submitting. There's gonna be another creative challenge. There's an XD challenge right after this if you wanna learn how to use XD. And then there's another Photoshop challenge in the morning at nine. Oh, there we go, you can pull it up so you can see Yes, Dr. Eckelberg. Thank you, MB. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, right after this is the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Peter. Um, and then after that will be um, a collaboration with Andrew and Brent. And I don't know exactly what that's going to entail, but it sounds really I fun. Think it's a, so I think it might be a UI UX it related It probably will be XD. I don't know what the collaboration is, but you'll have to Stay tuned. stick around, find out. And now back to our butter sculpture. Yes, we've got a little <laughs> bit more time to keep working on this Oh, I'm so thrilled. Sculpture. So I was originally gonna, let me see how these compose together. Sometimes I like to, to watch, like see how it looks in. <laughs> Thank you all for watching this. <laughs> um, I find this very amusing for some reason. Um, not sure why. Because it's a cow <laughs> on a motorcycle made out of butter. It's true. I don't know what Or cream, more... I guess, technically. Right. I thought I might have to do this in Photoshop, but I feel like the color actually works well it's enough. It's very similar. That we might not need to. Um, I will say that I think I need to fix this back wheel because it has a little, like, it's a little flat on the bottom. Wow, really doesn't want me to use wow. the Wi-Fi here. It's kicking me out, too. 
Um, okay, let's just fix this back wheel so you, it's really on the move. This is what I have for breakfast every day. I don't know about you guys. It's just a giant butter sculpture. It's a giant butter sculpture. <laughs> um, my grandpa, who's a great guy, um, drank butter that he melted over the stove as just, just a beverage. Wow, um, just a cup of butter? On a regular basis? Just a cup basis? of butter on a somewhat regular basis. Wow. Um, and he lived into his 90s, so. What is it called? People? Oh, um, blend, bulletproof coffee. Yes, blend butter into their coffee. Now, have you done that? I have not done it, even though I come from a family that had a grandpa that drank butter, but um, and the, I'm it's not opposed to, to it. It's supposed to be good for you. Uh, yeah, I think it's supposed to be like yak butter, because it's inspired like, by like a Himalayan beverage. Got it. Interesting. Um, I'm curious. I feel like it would be very creamy, but. So this is a weird workaround that I'm gonna show you. That Again, I feel like I keep being like, mm, I don't know if this is a smart way to do it. Sometimes I like to do the composition in InDesign because I feel like it's easier for me to get, or Illustrator to get a sense of what I want, but mm -hmm. then I wanna change the background. So occasionally if I'm lazy, sometimes I'll just export this as an image and then just edit that. Sure. Rather than um, go in and redo that. So I'm gonna say this like, butter pour. Um, and we're gonna do a PNG. And we're gonna say page four, RGB. Okay. Oh yeah, you definitely would feel sick if you drank that. I don't know how he did it, but <laughs> I'm just saying if one chose to do that, it doesn't, oh no, I didn't export as a spread, see? Always something. Um, <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean that you. You're gonna be fine, like you can yeah. survive and. Four, five, okay, let's see if that worked. That is so interesting. Yeah, he was from Connecticut. I don't know if that... That's a Connecticut thing to do. And look, see, now the color's already there. It just saved me a little time. Oh, actually, were these all transparent? For some reason, I thought these had a white background. Maybe this was unnecessary. I think I could just put a background in here. I can. There you go. We're gonna go with our uh, food rat again. That, he's on the move. He's on the move. <laughs> um, so far, breakfast is looking great. <laughs> Donuts and butter. Donuts and butter. What um, more could you need? Okay, so we have like, what, tw well, 20 minutes or less left? A little less. So. Wait, is that an egg on top of cereal? Chex Mix? I think it's an egg on Chex Mix. Wow. Why not? Um, I was very drawn to this like weird hand with a can. Okay. But I had to think about what to put on it. That seems like a lunch thing. Um, it is a lunch thing, probably. Yeah. One more, a uh, one archive I wanted to show people in relation to this, which I don't know if my Wi-Fi is working, but I don't know if anyone here is British. Let's try our Wi-Fi one more time. You can try this one again. Oh, here we go. Paco to the rescue. Try this to work. Okay. The top one is the. Okay. Is, is that an S or a five? Uh, no, no, no. So, go to the Sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Guys. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And that, is that an S or a 5? That's. We have a, we have a. Um, which one? Oh, they're all S's. They're all S's. Yes. There you go. <laughs> uh, Let us know what else you guys eat for breakfast. What other breakfast foods we should add into this stream mm -hmm. while we figure this out. Okay, that looks right. And if you have questions for Elizabeth, we only have a little bit of time left, so make sure that you yes. get them in here. Um, okay, let's try this now. Okay. We need Jeopardy music. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so the Sainsbury Archive is, uh, Sainsbury, I believe, is a supermarket in um, Britain. Okay. And they have, I think, one of the best archives on the internet. Specifically, they used to run their own, um, they used to make their own um, like packaging. Like it was almost wow. like the cheap version of the packaging. Yeah. Um, and they have all of it online and it's like amazing, amazing, amazing um, 1950s packaging. Um, and I wanna show you, but I have to figure out how to actually get to it because it's showing me like the like story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanna watch like I want to show you the real meat. Here you go. So they have like oh, websites. Um, wow. So they have all these packaging. So for example, we can just go to packaging, and then you'll see all of these. So some of these are 
They're just great. I think they're so fun. Um, and it makes me think that maybe for one of these pages, rather than rely on any of these found things, some of these like are pretty, like they didn't, they just, they just made it an egg through like the shape of the egg. Um, and they have so they have so many on here. It's like really astounding. I love and, those wafers. Yeah, there's just there's like so much. Cute. There's so much to look at, and it ranges from like the 1920s all the way through present day. Um, See, so yeah, I love that one. That was the lemon cream pie. That was just a big mm -hmm. circle. Mm -hmm. Or like this one. It's nice. This like oranges that are just like it's so it's simple. Just so simple, but it's beautiful. So maybe we should do if not oranges. What would be a good Maybe like, what do people like, grapefruits or? Yeah, grapefruits goes with the color theme yeah. of everything. What does a grapefruit look like? <laughs> <laughs> grapefruit. Yellow and then red on That's, the inside. Yeah, like a ruby red. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, we already have an orange in here. Oh no, we don't, we, have, we got rid of our orange. Let's make an orange. Jade says, yes, Sainsbury's is a major supermarket in England. Amazing, cool. Um, yeah, I've never, I only know it through their archive, but they have quite an archive. I would, <laughs> you don't have to be British to appreciate it. Um, I don't know, they just made really cool stuff. Yeah. So that's sort of our inside grapefruit. I'm just gonna put a stroke on it for the outside. It's cool that they still exist because you, sometimes you see these archives and mm -hmm. you're like, does this company actually have any <laughs> like real things anymore? Um, there are a few other people who have great archives. Avon, which is like a makeup company, they have a really great archive that nobody knows about. Now we do. Now you do. If this was about makeup, you would see it, but unfortunately this is about food. Maybe next time. Maybe yeah. if you come back. Um, okay. Here's my grapefruit. Cute. I love it. We're gonna, I'm actually going to do this white because I think usually those are white. Kind of, kind oh of yeah, um, the grapefruit color reminds me of the Pantone color for 2019, Live Coral. Oh, I yeah. did not know that. Right was... on trend. <laughs> Very on trend here. Very on trend. You know what's on trend? This. <laughs> yes. Next year. <laughs> Next year, butter this everywhere. Color of the year is butter. Um, so it'd be kind of fun. I'm wondering if, like, you know, when you like, if you were to like drop a hundred of these, mm -hmm. how would they stack? Or do you want a half? What, do, what is a half of a grapefruit? It would just be like, here. I know how to do this. <laughs> I like to put stuff in a group. I mean, in a, if I just don't want to actually think about it, you know, I'll just like yep. put it in another little box. Yeah. And call it, call it a day. <laughs> Very appealing, says Jesse. Um, does anyone remember that um, game, that book? Uh, where it's like a coke, it's like a tree, and all the fruit is falling off the tree, but they're numbers. Oh, chicka wait. chicka boom boom. Chicka chicka boom boom. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's this is my chicka chicka boom boom layout. Um. So fun, so colorful. <laughs> so, I just in case you think I only use found material, sometimes I also draw. Um, very questionable there grapefruits. You very questionable. But look how fast. Look at that. It's true. Um, I don't know. I think one thing I really like about personal projects is like they don't also have to look great. Like they can sort of be more like very much you like can sketches. Just play around, and then if it works, great. If not, it's it's just for you. Yeah. Yeah. Or me and everybody. Me in and show. yeah. Um, yeah, I think. I wonder if maybe maybe tomorrow we'll try and make it a little more of like a coherent match between sections or sure. something. You can see. Or maybe not, maybe we'll just keep doing weird stuff for fun. Ooh, Tim says Pantone has actually partnered with Adobe Stock to offer a curated color of the year collection for inspiration. Ooh. Love Go Pantone. That. The more inspiration, the better. Yes, well, to within reason. Yes. Too much can be crippling. Yes. But I think the, if you have a lot of different sources that you can go to. It's true. Then when you get stuck, you can just. These kind of look like bicycle wheels. They do. Um, also a great breakfast. Maybe we should turn one of them into a bicycle. Then you could kind of relate it to like 
head enough to work or something like that. Yeah, like, just like the butter sculpture. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's how I got here today. Bikes? A, really? No, on a butter <laughs> sculpture motorcycle. Bikes are something that I will never be able to draw. Like, if I try to draw a bike, it's like two circles with a line in between them. So I have to, like, actually reference one to, to have any idea what it looks like. Um, so let's see. Here's my bike. I love that though. I love that you were just like drawing, playing around, and then you see something and you can incorporate it. Yeah. You know? That's that's the way it you was do something it. that you came up with originally, but then as you're If anyone thinks I did any of this ahead of time. As you're building. No, no this is completely live. But that's the cool part is that then it turns into something and Yeah. And it becomes more than That's you what know, a bike looks like, right? Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Here's our bike, and it's gonna be, I'm gonna just draw it in the red so we can see it. I have about 10 more minutes. If any of you have questions for Elizabeth, feel free to ask. I love about to graphic answer design, questions. About <laughs> neuroscience. Neuroscience, we could get real crazy in here. Um, I used to work in a color vision research lab, so uh, I feel like I've done vision from both like the very practical side and mm -hmm. the very like artistic side. Do you think that influences your work today? Absolutely, I mean, I'm clearly very like research based. Like I mm -hmm. love looking at like solutions and I definitely like plan stuff out in a sort of um, scientific way. Um, and I definitely know a lot about color from sort of yeah. color spaces and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I wouldn't say it influences it like directly so much anymore because I probably would be very bad at neuroscience if I actually tried to do it. <laughs> as like a job right now. Yeah. Um, but no, I definitely, I, I really enjoyed studying it. I thought yeah. it was super interesting. And I think um, the more hobbies you can have outside of graphic design, the better of a mm -hmm. graphic designer you will be. Yeah, well-rounded. Um, because it's like, if you're making graphic design about graphic design, it's just very like um, didactic. It can feel very um, like repetitive, but graphic design is such an amazing tool to make provide commentary or mm -hmm. create brands or whatever. If you're making design about design, it feels like you're just, you're kind of designing in a vacuum. Sure. And it feels like, I'm, to me, I, I always like to design and I think is more powerful. Yeah. yeah. What made you decide to double major and have graphic design as, a, as one of your majors when you wanted to be a doctor? Um, I just always really loved art, but mm -hmm. I didn't really have it in my family who yeah. did it and it, I don't know if that's something that other people here resonate with, but it just wasn't really something I considered as an option. Um, so for me, I was in a dual degree program at um, Brown and RISD, so it was sort of like I thought I was doing, I sort of went in thinking I'll be more focused on the Brown side and mm -hmm. RISD will be my sort of like- Like creative outlet Creative outlet, because you know, I liked art, I did it in school, but, um, yeah. and then once I got there, I just like fell in love with it and sort of felt like I didn't have a choice. Like I had to do this because it was sort of, something I just loved to do, and it mm. would have felt wrong to not have done it. Yeah. So sometimes your plans change, and I oh, think absolutely. that's very okay. I don't know what color, this bike might not work out. <laughs> I think the wheels might be a little. Too big. Too big. Black yeah. keys or Arctic monkeys. Can I say neither? <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? You can um, say whatever you want. I'd say, I guess between the, oh, I used to love Arctic monkeys when I was like a teenager. Um, but I feel like I haven't listened to them in years. Do they have new music out? <laughs> Probably. Um, it's funny, you just, sometimes you just stop listening to people and then you find out that... All of a sudden they have new yeah. stuff, yeah. Um, you know what, I'm gonna ditch the bike. That's okay. I'm gonna ditch the bike. We tried it. I think I need to draw smaller wheels if this bike is gonna work. That's okay though, you tried it and I it tried doesn't it, work. Um, and now I'm slightly better at drawing bikes. Yes. Maybe not. But also isn't that so much part of the process is just trying things and... Yes. Definitely. You can't, it might look great in your head and then you put it down on paper and it doesn't look. Oh my God, look, I already have a there. grapefruit in here. Wow. From Sainsbury. It's the grapefruit is very cute. So green. Yeah, it's, it's grapefruit squash. Is that a thing? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> um, to some people. Um, what else do I have in here? I really liked, I have a few photos of people like with food or eggs. Like this mm -hmm. one was very like. A, a very oh, sultry wow. photo of someone with deviled eggs. Yes, look at that hair. Um, but I, I feel like we could get, we could make her hold something else if we wanted to. 
Um, what else? I, I feel like I don't want to. I don't want to introduce too much of a new thing. We only have ten minutes left. So yeah, but you're gonna be continuing this. Tomorrow. It's true. I will be. Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure you tune in tomorrow, nine thirty Pacific time, um, to see how this all turns out. Yeah. And come with suggestions and questions. And Please. We want um, you guys to be a part of this too. Okay. So let's see. We haven't done anything. F we did salad. We did beef. We did. We haven't really done a true dessert. We did. A, we did a meat dessert. <laughs> We didn't do a real dessert, so I think maybe that would be a good place to focus some of our attention. Absolutely. For this last 10-minute uh, haul. So, dessert. You have about four minutes. Four, my yeah. last four-minute yes, haul. I know. It's deceptive. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so, I like this guy. I think we were going to use that before. I think it's a very pretty and also kind of weird illustration. I'm also going to move this page here. Um, let's see what I want to do with this. Oh, Jade is asking if there's any more archives you use in addition. Oh, actually, you know what would be good to do for so, this four minutes? Yes, you want to show your... Yeah, so um, if you go to my website, here it is, um, and you go to archiving down here on the bottom, um, you can Look see... Look at those gels, <laughs> You can guys. see maybe Look. where my inspiration <laughs> comes from. Um, if you go down here, I have a little line, you know, quite passionate about open access resources, et cetera, and there's a link. And if you open this link, it should send you to this big spreadsheet that I um, made a few years ago, or not even a few years ago, last year for a talk. Um, and it has a lot of archives sorted by wow. um, different topics. So I have it sorted by institutions, um, places that are a single topic, um, rather, like, so for example, under ephemera, I have like, Packaging, Brazilian cigarettes, Dutch soap wrappers, European chocolate, Italian Amazing. food, Japanese bread. Um, and some of them link you out to maybe like a Flickr. Like this one is, let's see, US Snacks. This is like a Flickr called Snack Raiders. <laughs> That's just um, like all foods. Um, and then some of them are more contemporary. Um, there are design archives in here. Some of the ones we were just talking about, the Cooper Hewitt is in here. Um, I also have some corporate archives. So this is like the Avon one that I was talking about. Um, there are a lot of great corporate archive documents. So like Avon, in addition to, you can sort it by year. Wow. Which is pretty great. Um, and this is so useful. It's very useful. So useful, even just for inspiration. Even oh, yeah. if you're not, you know, gonna play like, around this is with just any of these a, images. Um, you don't have to even, like this is just a f old packaging, but it's super high resolution. You know, yeah, and like this is like beautiful. kind of a beautiful um, setup. And and this is, I would really love to, if people have recommendations, I have a co commenting turned on. So if you have an archive that I haven't um, found or known about, just throw it in there as a comment and I'll even like, I put on the side, you know, who sent it in. Um, it's really helpful because it, it just makes it bigger for everybody and I only yeah. know about some of them, obviously. Absolutely. Um, and if also tags. I try to add tags to some of these, or I wanted to, but it just takes a lot of time. So if you open one and you're like, oh, this has tons of great, you know, food illustrations, you can just put in the tags or in the notes, like really good for illustrations, really good for photography. And I don't know, I think if everyone contributes stuff like this, it just makes a better design oh, community. Yeah. So absolutely. I feel pretty strongly about that. Yeah, this is really great. Um, like you've done so much work and research already. So like yeah. you I made it really easy for you. You're saving all of us so much time. Um, and there's so much good stuff out there. It's really like it's once you once you start to look at this stuff, mm -hmm. um, you they can't even believe that you haven't been looking at it for years because it's and and my whole Instagram these days is basically like, you know, Ukrainian mosaics <laughs> like and stuff that you would never think would be helpful for graphic design. You might find something in there that's like exactly what you needed um, and, and really can give you, even just whether it's like a color palette or a composition, there's tons of stuff you can find. Yeah, well thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. Um, tomorrow we're gonna continue working on this scene, so make sure you tune in 9.30 tomorrow morning, um, same time, and Elizabeth will be finishing up her super awesome design. Um, and then stay tuned for um, XD Daily Creative Challenge and XD Stream right after this, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye.